welcome to another episode of ENFTV's Bridging the Gap. Today I'm joined by Ben Hanna. Morning, Ben. How are you? Yeah, the very best, Jason. Nice to nice to meet you in person. Yeah. Thanks for um, thanks for for giving up your time. So this is a little bit of a special episode for me because um, I'm just going to rewind the clock a little bit to the end of last year. And important to say that your mum is Adrian Hanna. Yeah, hospitality of hospitality fame yeah, of <laughs> and uh, Adrian and I are friends on uh, on Facebook and she posted something that I don't think at the time you was aware of uh, as to how proud she was of you last year because you did something which really resonated to me at the time as being absolutely fantastic and that was picking your ultimate fear and just kind of going out and doing it and I thought today we could have just a short chat about that because it really resonated with me, and I'm sure it will resonate with the students that, that watch this show like religiously as well. Um, so just going back a little bit, um, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you did, basically? Yeah, yeah. So um, to go back, yeah, pretty much to the start, um, I'm sure my mum my has told you, but I, as a child, was just crippled with anxiety of any type of public speaking. I was okay. You know, speaking with friends, um, but as soon as I was the center of attention, as soon as I had to stand up above where everyone was sat and say anything, you know, um, that was worst case scenario for me. So, you know, we did drama at school and I always pretended to be sick before those drama lessons on it. I remember them for uh, 11 a.m. on a Wednesday and I always tried to be, pretend to be sick at 10.30. I hated it. And then, I don't know, maybe two or three years ago, I um, decided to push myself and try uh, stand-up comedy because um, I don't really know why, to be honest. It's the I still I'm still you know nervous doing it now, but uh, it just seems like I just need to get rid of this fear and it's a, um, needed to improve this or I needed to get rid of this fear. I still have it, but um, definitely getting better. But uh, yeah, so I'm. So, um, dipping my toe into the world of stand-up comedy. And it's exciting and scary, but um, yeah, it's going okay. <laughs> Haven't cried on stage yet. It really resonated with me because you've, you've, you've kind of, you've literally, it's not just stand, standing up and doing a presentation in a, a conference or doing a best man speech where everyone kind of wants you to succeed. You're putting yourself out to be judged up on stage and heckled, which just uh, to me is absolutely terrifying. And for someone that, admittedly, you just admitted came from, a, you know, a background where you were you were quite shy, retiring. You used to, you know, hate any kind of lesson at school where you had to put yourself out there. That, to me, seems like the ultimate, the ultimate sort of, you know, way to face your fears. Is that why you picked it? That's kind of why I picked it. I've done something similar many years ago. You know, did one of those. Um teaching and building a school abroad thing. So it was part of the uh, part of uni. I went away. And the idea with that was stand up. I'd have to stand up for every day for a month and, you know, be a teacher. And um, that I did that for that reason as well, and um, to try and push myself. Um, but because it was in front of, you know, five, six, seven year old kids who didn't understand what I was saying, you know, it didn't maybe, it wasn't as much of a challenge as maybe I was hoping for. And I've had the idea to do presentations at work and stuff. Um, but that fear just still, it still lingered. Um, and I've, I've had an interest in comedy for a long, long time. And just as a, an admirer of, com of comedians that they were able to do that. So um, yeah, I decided to push myself to do that. Um, still don't really know how to, how to deal with the hecklers. I haven't really figured that skill out yet. Luckily, I haven't been too bad. They've been quite nice to me. They can they can maybe see them. It's one of my first first times, but uh, no, I haven't uh, haven't had any disasters yet. What is it about public speaking that people find absolutely terrifying? Speaking to to students that are now may have to stand up and give presentations in front of their peers. Very soon, will have to stand up in a workplace and give presentations and may not be prepared for it. Um, what is it about public speaking that people are terrified of? it's hard to know it's something i've thought about a lot because it was holding me back a bit um or holding me back a lot it was it's something so deeply ingrained within me it's like a fear of 
it's like a fear of heights for me. I it's I really don't know why I hate it so much because I I like I like being at around a dinner table or at the pub, and I like telling stories to people. But as soon as someone said, "Could you just tell everyone we need to go in five minutes and just stand up and say that?" that it for some reason just changes the dynamic for me. Um, very very hard to, to describe why I, I hate it so much. But someone I was speaking with a comedian um, before I did my first gig, of trying to get some advice, and an amazing piece of advice was firstly. Everybody wants you to succeed. Everyone's there to, has paid to see you do some comedy. So everyone wants you to succeed. And then I guess I translate into the workplace that everyone's there to gain some information from you. So everyone, no one's against you. And then the other, the other great piece of advice she gave me was no one really cares. No one's really listening that much. As soon as they walk out of the room, they'll forget what you were talking about. It just doesn't, you know, it may linger with you for a few days, but oh, I didn't do this, didn't do that. I was nervous. I was, I was shaking, but no one, no one remembers. No one will care. No one will care about the bad, the bad bits. If you do really, really well, they're much more likely to remember. But, um, yeah, that's, that's uh, the, the kind of advice I've taken forward. And I think it's it's good advice as well. I mean, I I remember being a young man and having we had to do the hotel I worked in. We had to do a business plan presentation to the directors and peers and heads of department. Um, this came around once a year, and it used to fill me with absolute anxiety. Yeah. It was turned up to three hundred. Yeah. You had to stand up. You had to present with your PowerPoint. My palms were sweaty. My heart was racing. I had this horrible, horrible visual sign that I was terrified, which was my voice used to go really shaky. I used yeah. to get a really shaky voice. I was just, it discombobulated me. I was absolutely terrified of it. And that fear remained with me, like unconquered, I, I, you know, for, for years and years. Um, and now I'm fairly comfortable standing up and doing guest lectures at universities to students, um, presenting, being on stage, um, uh, Panel discussions is is fine, but I think I don't know if you agree, but the the only and you we obviously do because you've done the same as me. But the only way to conquer that, that fear or any fear is by repetition of doing it, building up, yeah. giving your brain almost um, you're almost saying to your brain it's giving it a reference point so that when you've you know you've done it and you've done it again and you've done it again and you can look back and say, hey brain, look, we've done this before. Why wouldn't we be able to do it again? It's that repetition of success almost. Would you agree? That's exactly that's exactly it because I have to do a lot of presentations at work and sometimes to quite quite a, you know, in air quotes important people, um, that I would be quite intimidated by. And I used to get so so nervous again. You know, I'm only presenting I work in transport traffic data to some local politicians. It's not nothing crazy, but I would get so nervous about it. And then once I'd done stand up and repeated it a couple of times, I was able to say to myself, "Why am I nervous speaking to this, you know, head of city transport in the southwest of England when it's much much scarier doing stand up to fifty people who have paid money to be entertained, um, and I'm on with other prefer like, yeah, maybe should have caveated. I've only done a few gigs. I'm not a comedian, but I'm." on the same stage as professional comedians and the the crowd are the they've paid hard hard money to to be entertained and that is a thousand times scarier than doing a presentation in front of someone who really doesn't matter that much one person um and once i've done it now that i have that reference point and now that i've done it loads of times or a few times i just Everything else just seems. I've done the scariest thing, and now everything else just seems, just seems easier. I just have to remind as I, as I'm about to go into a meeting, I just have to say to myself, "I've done stand up," and then, then my kind of nerves just kind of go away. But yeah, it's just about repetition. I think you definitely need to do it as much as possible. I'm still nervous before every, every gig. The, I really should be doing it like 
a few times a week. I'm, I'm currently doing it by once a month because I'm struggling to get gigs. Um, but if I was doing it a few times a, a few times a week, I would say that you know the fourth one that week would feel a lot easier than the first one on the Monday, on the Monday night. Yeah. So it's it's about yeah, absolutely. It's about repetition. That's what I find. Would you find it? Do you think it's more about facing your fears than it is about actually being good at comedy? It, do you still look at it in the way that every time I do it, I'm facing my fears, or do you now look at it like I've kind of conquered that fear? I now want to tip the scale and start becoming good at it or better at it. Yeah, I've definitely. It, yeah, comedy's always been a passion of mine. Just, just, just viewing it, um, and now that. I feel like I've nearly ninety percent conquered that fear. Yeah. Um. I am just trying to enjoy it and trying to enjoy the process of writing, trying to enjoy the process of being up there on stage. Because the first time it was an absolute blur. I could have been saying anything. I can't. I don't yeah. even remember if people were laughing or not. It was just white noise. <laughs> um. But now I can kind of take a step back and actually enjoy being up on stage and. I think, yeah. I just, I think. Sorry, the what was the what was the end, the last part of your question? There, I uh, rambled myself into oblivion. There, that's fine. I was just interested to know where you were in your development in oh, terms sorry, of. Yeah. I presume the first couple of times you were terrified doing it, and it was all just about getting the job done and getting yeah. off the stage. But now are you okay with actually focusing a little bit more on developing that comedy? Yes, yeah. It's got it's got um it's got ten percent, twenty percent easier. Uh, and I'm now starting to enjoy it, which is really great. Um the nerves are still a thing, still a thing I need to work on. Um but I don't feel like I outwardly show it to the audience. And I think if uh, if you are an audience member, you see the comedians nervous. You can like visually see that they're nervous. It kind of it makes the audience a little bit uncomfortable. I think so. Yeah. If you can just pretend, well, this is another thing I've learned. Just just for five ten minutes, that's the only amount of time I'm on stage. Ten minutes, but just pretend you're like you're acting. You're a completely different person. Fake it um, till you make it. Fake it till you make it exactly. And now I'm at a stage <laughs> where I'm I'm trying to figure out what's funny and what my style is and yeah I, I don't have any preconceptions that i'm gonna do this as a career it's just a hobby at the moment um yeah which uh is great it's just a little pastime something i get to think about in my spare time it's great what i love about it is uh, and i love the i love the videos about conquering your fears and motivation that i have on instagram that i watch but what i love about this story is that you're just a normal guy if you don't mind me saying you're yeah, just a normal yeah. guy and that's why I think yeah. it'll, it resonated with me and it'll resonate with students that you're just a real person. You're not a celebrity or anything that's just basically said, I'm fed up with feeling this way and I'm going to go ahead and conquer my fears. So how do I do that? What's the scariest thing that I could do? Well, it's go up on stage and face an audience of hecklers and do something that I've not done before that I'm scared of. To me, that's that's absolutely fantastic. I think I... Maybe I've been like this for a long time. I, just, I noticed that picture of you of you running behind you. I think what's sometimes good to do is just pick the scariest thing. If you if you want to get into running, just sign up to a half marathon. That might be absolutely ter terrifying, and that's such a far away or a long a long run. But it just it forces you out the door. It forces you to to start even doing little runs and. That was the, uh, the same thing with me. It forced me to to do to get up on the stage, and even if you don't complete your ten k, your half marathon, or your marathon, it will be a good story, no matter what happens. And that's kind of the way I thought about it. I just, I just had kind of gotten maybe in a bit of a routine with my life, and I was, uh, you know, just doing the nine to five at work, um, having to do meetings all the time, being nervous about who I was presenting in front of. I thought, yeah, I just really need to shake it up. I need to yeah. make a big change. And uh I think just, you know, emailing a comedian saying, You have an open mic night, can I do five minutes? Um in two months time, that just really forced myself forced myself out the door really. 
So yeah, mm. it's another just with the running. It, uh, to just pick up on a point that you made, I think it's really, really interesting that it's almost like analysis par- par- paralysis. Sorry, people they may they think, oh yeah, I really want to do this, or I really want to do that, but they never get round to it. Or, or, or the, the other thing, they'll they'll kind of look into doing it, and they're really just putting off getting in terms of running, getting the trainers on, and getting out of the door in terms of comedy making that call or sending that text that says, have you got an open open mic? Because it, it almost just, it floats around the head of something that they might do, but they never actually do it. And the best the best way to, to get started is just to start, even if you're crap initially, or even if you don't know what you're doing initially, just, just to start. And then it gathers its own volition from there. Absolutely. I think I, yeah, it gathers its own volition. As I said, if you, if you fail, it doesn't matter. You'll you'll be the guy that tried to run a marathon. You'll be the guy that tried stand up and and that's that's a great story as well. I think I think I realized recently that uh, my my interpretation of the meaning of life is to just gather as many stories, good good stories as possible. Um, and half of those stories are are um of, of failure, but still they're they're funny to tell, you know. Um I signed up to the Edinburgh Marathon with hardly any training, and uh, I was sick a few times before it crossed the line. And but it's a much much better story than if I had just done it and got a good time. And you know, my first my first stand up set was an absolute disaster. Um, <laughs> it you know it was terrible, but um, I it was a good it was a good story. It was a very funny story, and then I I got a I got a little taste of. You know, a one or one or two seconds of laughter I got when I, when I was up there for five minutes. Uh, I got a little bit of a taste of what this was all about, and um, now I'm seeking that, seeking that thrill, that uh, that feeling. It's just, uh, it's a bit contagious. I guess same as you know, getting a runner's high. I guess as well, yeah. you just you just constantly chasing that feeling. Well, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying. So well, I wouldn't say this is a fear, but it's certainly something, it's a, a narrative I've told myself for years and years. And I think I told you um, when we spoke a couple of weeks ago, but I've always been terrible at navigation. Like I could come out of the toilets in the pub and turn the wrong way. And I often do it coming out of a hotel room. I'll go the wrong way and I'll be like, where's the stairwell? Why is there a fire yeah. exit here? And I just, I literally, I am that bad at, at navigation. So, um, and as you quite rightly point out, I do, I do a little bit of running. Um so at the end of last year, I thought, you know what? I'm going to do an ultra marathon, which is further than I've run before. Um, but also one out in the Peak District, um, out in the sticks where I'm going to need some kind of semblance of knowledge of navigation um, as, a, as a kind of like double challenge. So um, that's that's kind of something that I wanted to do. And for the same reasons as you, I'm kind of just tired of telling myself that story that i'm rubbish at navigation i'm not too i'm not good at that it's like well i've told myself that that many times that i just believe it and i think there is a a a truth in that that you can sometimes just the story that you tell yourself becomes a reality would you agree 100 percent, and that just becomes becomes part of your personality it's like yeah i'm the guy that is terrified of public speaking yeah and that's just that's just my personality and then you have to think hold on a second that's that's not that's not set in stone at all um there's no reason from you know you can change other things about you you know you yeah you can you can constantly develop but for some reason i had i had it in my head i'm the guy that's nervous about public speaking and always will be that's just part of my personality but yeah there's absolutely no reason for that to be the case you, know, you, built you, as a, you did something scary and now you've improved that skill and you're not that guy anymore, which is great. Yeah. It's about gently what – the foundations are fixed and you think so solidly that it's like a house you could never never knock it down, this this fear. But actually, sometimes you find if you start to wobble the foundation a little bit, it's not as stable as you thought. And actually, over time, you can knock that house, house of fear down and rebuild it as something – you know, a different story. Exactly. Like if I if I think back, really not that many years ago, but particularly when I was in secondary school, I 
I think about this, that person there that was worried about, you know, in, um, in English class and you'd all have the book and you'd have to read a paragraph each and I'd be dreading. I could, <laughs> excuse me, you could see the, you know, the people in front of me doing one and I could see it was nearly my turn. And yeah. I would, you know, ask to go to the toilet so that when I came back in the hope that the teacher would have forgotten and it's moved on down the class, you know. And if I think that, if I think back to that, that kid, I was, you know, I was still old enough, old enough to know better. But uh, if I think back to that, there's no chance, no chance in hell that I would uh, have thought I could be standing up on stage in a, in a comedy club, you know, not a chance. So, yeah, that's you just got to push all of those foundations and uh, yeah, become a new person. And it, I remember, yeah, you're always happy for it. I remember standing in uh, many years ago, standing in uh, networking events where each person had to stand up and do a 60 second pitch on themselves and their business. And it was the same kind of concept. You'd go around the room, inevitably we'd be sitting in a hollow square kind of layout. So you knew it was yeah. coming round as it, as it came closer that, sweaty hands and the palms and the heart used to start and then no shaky voice really it's just words falling out of your mouth isn't it but yeah i uh, something stuck stuck with me that um i was talking to um a counselor about this once she was talking about specifically men's mental health and she said you know so many men particularly leave school they'll stop playing sport they'll Get, get with a girl or maybe have a have a child get married and life becomes what life becomes it becomes maybe child care a little bit of work and they just lose who they are as a person they stop competing or challenging themselves and at that point at 40 something years old or 30 something years old they'll fall into depression and the life just takes a, a decline and it's like what you've done is so important because it's it, it, it's it's invigorating, isn't it? it? It guards against that. It's it's challenging yourself. It's putting yourself out there and not just kind of slowly declining into, you know, mental health, health issues, which so many do. Absolutely. Um, that's, well, well, I said earlier, the public speaking is my biggest fear. I think actually my biggest fear in life is kind of getting stuck in a routine and falling into exactly that. So I think at every possible opportunity, I've I really try to shake out my routine and, and not get stuck in that. This is my life. This is what it will be for the rest of the time. You know, um, as you can tell, I'm, I, I'm late. I, I didn't think of now, but I, as you can tell from my accent, wasn't born here. You know, moving to England was scary at the time. I started a, I started a small business for a year, which failed, but yeah, um, it was fun to do. And again, it's a good story, but that was scary at the time. Doing stand up was scary. Um, I went on a solo bike packing trip around France and Belgium last year on my own. I'd never done that before. That was terrifying, but um, I just wanted to, yeah, shake it up and not fall into any kind of routine. You know, routine's good for for some people, um, and I have a routine. You know, I play football with my mates every Monday. I I go on a cycle every Friday with my mates. So some some aspects of the routine are good, but that bigger picture stuff. If you can shake it up, that's what I'm most those those moments that I've shaken it up. Um, or those are the moments I'm most proud of. Um, yeah, it's all about it's all about gaining stories you can tell at the pub. That's at the end of the day, you know. That's that's the way I really all about all about gaining stories. Yeah, brilliant way of putting it. So, what's next for you then, Ben? What's next? Um, I really really just want to keep going uh, you know i have i do one gig and then i it goes okay and i think right i need to change our material and then i i i'm not in the routine of, of immediately emailing or messaging someone on facebook or instagram about a new gig and then i wait a bit of time and it gets scary again but then i always think come on that was one of the most incredible moments of your life being up there and making people laugh. Why aren't you doing it? It's really silly. So then I do it, but there's always a bit of a gap of doubting myself, but then I always end up doing it. So I just need to realize that there's no, that gap is pointless and not helping anybody. Um, so yeah, just keep going. 
I've got a friend who, uh, a good friend of mine, Bristol here, who um, also has seen what I've done and kind of wants to get into comedy as well. So me and him are, um, me and him are trying to write some stuff together and, and trying to help him to get up on stage and kind of face his fear of it. Um, so yeah, I just want to make try and make a bit of a name for myself in the Bristol comedy scene. That seems a way, way off at this point. You know, I'm only doing open mic five minutes and ten minutes. But yeah, let's keep going and um, yeah, just try and shake up that routine. You know, I, I, I work a nine to five transport job in the council um, and it'd be good to, you know, it's not full of adrenaline. Uh, to put it politely <laughs> or to put it to put it uh kindly so um, yeah just looking for a bit of a uh, bit of adrenaline a bit of a uh, bit of a shake up mm-hmm. so just keep keep pushing forward i think um i don't have any aspirations to be a professional or anything like that but yeah just uh keeping on my toes basically it's brilliant advice you certainly been an inspiration to to me um and i know i know that your mum's really proud of you. I marched over to her yeah. uh, event down in London and um, we, we were chatting about it. I think we were both welling up, actually. <laughs> Sam, I know yeah. she's, she's really proud of you, bless her. Oh, so, uh, she would cry at the drop but, of her heart. <laughs> but, but, but listen, thanks, Ben. I've really enjoyed talking to you. Like you, You're an inspiration to a lot of people. You know, the students listening will resonate with a lot of what you've said. Um, but, yeah, so... Do you, We've got to go now, but do you know? Do you know what the number one biggest fear is amongst people? Uh, I would guess. Um, I would have. I would have guessed death. <laughs> if not to bring the talk of it, the interview down you'd, too much. <laughs> you, you'd be wrong, Ben. The number one public fear is, is public speaking. Do you know what number two is? Let's go for heights. That's wrong. Number two is death. So people would rather okay. be in the casket rather than reading the eulogy. There you go. Free <laughs> joke for you there. You can use that. Courtesy of Thank Jerry Seinfeld, by the way. <laughs> no, you claim that one. Cheers, Jason. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ben. Uh, and that's all we've got time for next week, uh, this week. So like and share the show because it helps us attract really cool guests like Ben Hanna. Goodbye. Here we go.